But when it comes to the backswing or the racket drop, this is where style comes into play. And you're probably asking yourself, so does that mean, Nick, that we can just take the racket back as far as possible? And no, it doesn't necessarily mean that. There is such a thing as making a late contact because of a preparation that's too large. That is absolutely something that is a problem, but it is a complex answer to that problem because it depends on many factors. So if indeed someone has a take back that's occurring on the hitting side of the body and all of a sudden that player would start taking the racket further back, yes, uh, that type of player will make late contact on pretty much all the forehands because they don't have the right muscle memory for this type of take back and also most importantly they don't have the right sequencing of the torso rotation when the racket goes further back. So let me explain that in a little more detail. So if somebody has an ATP style preparation where the racket is dropping on the hitting side, in this particular setup, the waiting phase on the forehand can be much longer. In other words, the player can wait to initiate the torso rotation until the racket is on the bottom portion of the racket drop. This is not the case when the racket goes further back. You cannot wait that long. In other words, now, because the racket is coming from a further place, it's coming from behind the body, players have to open up sooner. So on the WTA, you will often see a position on the forehand where the non-dominant arm is going forward while the racket is directly on the other side of the body. That is an indicator that the rotation started earlier compared to an ATP forehand. Because here's the fact, whether it's WTA or ATP, players will always make contact with the dominant shoulder in front when they're striking the forehand well. Yes, sometimes they will get caught behind, but on the vast majority of forehands, the contact will be established with that dominant side in front. This is the case for the WTA and for the ATP. But where the difference lies is how the sequencing of the torso rotation is structured. Let me repeat it again. On ATP style forehand, because the racket has a shorter path here, players will wait longer and they will start opening up when that racket hits the bottom portion of the racket drop. On a WTA forehand, this is not the case. Players will have to start opening up sooner when the racket is on the top portion of the racket drop. This is where WTA players start to open up so that when they get towards the bottom portion of the racket drop, their non-dominant arm is pointing forward and they're already somewhat open towards the court so that they can make contact in front. So you're probably wondering, Nick, how in the heck do you learn this stuff? This sounds so complicated. Well, actually, nobody learns this because nobody is teaching this. I already told you, 99.99% .99 of all tennis coaches worldwide will teach any player, whether it be WTA or ATP, to put the racket here on the hitting side because it makes sense, it's logical. I'm not blaming anybody for this. But through my research and my intuitive approach to tennis, I was able to establish that there are many different styles when it comes to the take back and there is no right or wrong if fundamentals are present. The things that are important on the forehand is not necessarily how far back the racket will go. The things that are important on the forehand is that the forehand is continuous, fluid, smooth and most importantly that acceleration is present because that's what the forehand should be all about. You should be able to accelerate the forehand in a way where you're going to reach your maximum acceleration around the contact zone and you can only achieve that by not thinking about how the racket is behaving in this part of the racket when you have your mind set on what type of take back to execute you are going to be forced to slow down that part of the forehand and in turn you're going to ruin your acceleration and you're going to make your forehand worse this is the case at the recreational level it is the case at the high level and it is also the case at the elite level and that's why you don't see anybody trying to fix Sabalenka's forehand, Madison Key's forehand, Serena Williams' forehand because there's absolutely nothing wrong with that forehand. In those cases it's obvious because those forehands are making tens of millions of dollars and nobody would dare to touch them.